Good morning and welcome to this video on Leroy Anderson and Mitchell Parrish's sleigh ride. Um, what to say about it? It's in the key of G, so it's with a bouncy swing. Sometimes it feels as if the notes are swung in pairs of quavers. Another time it doesn't feel quite so swung. So there's a bit of variety and I'll, when I get to those bars I'll say it. It has an introductory passage for the first um, four bars and not all the chords are easy it must be admitted this I start with a D7 where I'm playing it up at the fifth fret there's another version of that where you play two zero two five um, but then you've got to swing up to the G major seventh for the next one so that is an easier switch and notice it starts on it's a three beat bar at the beginning one two three four and that idea of having um, for starting on the second beat in a, for a pattern so it does carry on a bit so after this one one two three four one Nice and slow, so you can see the hand movements. Notice this G major ninth, and then to an E minor seven on the first beat, and then this one. To play this E minor seventh, I want the top D, and I can do this double stop. But you can use two fingers like that to get those two fours and now one which if you haven't played it before it might be a problem again I can do this double stop you can play this one with four fingers then back to this Then it says bar four, but really it's bar five when you get, but it's the fourth complete bar. Um, I see what Sibelius has done here. And notice in that bar, it's best to cut it short, the first chord. And there you get this effect of one and two and. Yes, it's actually in cut common time. So it's better to think of it as one and two and rather than one, two, three, four. It means there's a slightly heavier beat on the, what's the second beat? One and two and one and two and. So the main part of the tune starts after, at the beginning of bar four, sorry. Now this is a very rich G I play in bar five, four, two, three, five. Um, I need this D and if I just played that one I'd be missing out the note B from the chord so being a bit of a pedant I like to get that one in and then I slide up my little finger because then take it up then have this position slowly so standard A minor but bringing in the B then a D7 and I can do this three um, string bar A but having the top A sounding lots of little um, changes of harmony so in that G bar in bar 7 well, it depends where if you, can, if you play it that way then you can bring the finger down to make what's effectively an E minor and in the A minor 7th bar 
or one of these subtle changes when you could just ignore them but they, they make what the piece is um, rich for which is these harmonic changes tricks that we had here. A lot of that is a repeat bar um, 9 is the same as bar 5 was. This one. Sorry. But with one extra melody note. something but it has. Sorry about that. Then in bar 12 it has a key change. You go back to this B flat with a bit of a reach up to the 5. You can play that like we get a bit later on but that is the best way of doing. Then to that D7 again like the one we started with at the beginning. Then back to this chord. And that part was the same as we had in bars 5, 6 and 7. Um, slightly different ending when we get to bar 16. I'll go from 16. Top of page 2. change key so it's got to get back to G rather than D which would go back to a G so here you're putting a C chord bar 19 then the G and then suddenly the key signature it's gone to three sharps and this means that it's not A major but C sharp minor um, some again some chords that you might not know there's start with C sharp minor actually it's a seventh here seventh halfway through bar 23 and a B minor seventh in bar 28 bar 21. So starting with C sharp minor. And that might be the best way of fingering it with fingers 1 and 3 with finger 4 coming in there. And you've got to reach up to the 4. might be the most tricky chord in the whole thing because you want the 4 to give you a B in bar 29 then I'm just moving the first finger back to get that 1, 2 um, 
other ways of doing it are much easier. That's such an awkward one. You might be able to squeeze that one, but I never do it. Where you have the fingers that way around on one fret. I always prefer to nestle them. Now this one you've got to be very careful that this arch comes over so you can get that A because it's the melody note so it needs to be there. And then suddenly you're going stratospherical. You have to have it open and then all the way up to 12. Again, this is bar 33. And then you're into a probably a shape you might not have played up the way up. So let's do those bars again. Actually it's enough. You could play those opens as a harmonic. Um, and a lot of the rest of it can be in harmonics, but let's just, if you do that one, it gives the idea of going up high. So you're playing that to the first beat on 33. If you can get it, if not, then just play. Then 12. That's bar 35. I always like it when you suddenly find that makes a nice chord and you've just got one finger on and all the rest is open. And at bar 37, we're really back to what we did in bar 5. into a B flat and then back to the D7. Now it's got a double bar line and that's telling you to go back all the way. and then you play it all again um, which makes it quite a long song so you could if you wanted to play bar 50 and then go straight to 52 and miss out the first time ending and do the second one again this rather strange chord then on to this one Then, yeah, this is a, uh, oh, I see. Okay, so there's some peculiar G major ninths in there. Um, so, first beat of bar 52. Then this one. Then you're up to here. So, um, quite a lot of complexities and difficult fingering to do it. One nice idea would be just to learn it. And do what you see with the notes, with their stems going up, and play it just as a melody piece first. And even maybe doing a recording of the chords uh, to accompany yourself would get a very nice idea. And that beginning will be... And the tune starting on that five in bar four. And you 
can leave all the rest till the second note of bar eight. So you can all leave out all those difficult chords and just play the five. So there are lots of different ways of trying to simplify it. The problem with simplifying the chords too much is you lose the richness of the harmonies. Um, but they do make it more difficult. But have fun over Christmas. Uh, and if you don't learn to play it until next year, well, that's still a, a good chunk of good ukulele fingerstyle playing. Thank you for watching.